dear students we are going to solve one more problem on the assessment of companies applying mat minimum alternate tax this is video number 7 and dr pandurangan ayak principal is this calling in part the name of the company is delta limited it is engaged in the business of manufacture of bicycles its profit and loss account is as and that so profit and loss account is given followed by that certain adjustments are given let us see the adjustments one by one or the additional information one by one uh for tax purposes the company wants to claim deduction under section 80 ib that is 30% of 14 lakh 69000 And depreciation as per section 32, it is 5 lakh 42,000. Okay, first let us let us let me take the second part. That is depreciation as per section 32, 542. See, uh, first look into the depreciation as per the financial statement. So this is the depreciation prepared as per financial accounting. So the total depreciation is. normal depreciation is 6 lakh 10000 plus extra depreciation because of revaluation 3 lakh together 9 lakh 10000 as per financial accounting so this is to be added while computing business income one thing secondly it should be deducted from uh, net profit i mean uh depreciation as per section 32 5 lakh 42000 should be deducted from a net profit let me repeat total depreciation which is debited to profit and loss account like 6 lakh 10000 plus 3 lakh should be added and depreciation as per section 32 of the income tax act that is 5 lakh 42000 should be deducted all right then further things regarding the appreciation regarding computation of book profit let me tell you later on then company wants to set off see for tax purposes brought forward business loss of 18 19 is 15 lakh and there is no there is no uh, depreciation unabsorbed depreciation for tax purposes and then for accounting purposes brought forward business loss is 5 lakh and an unabsorbed depreciation is 1 lakh let me confine myself to the second part here for accounting purpose so here uh, there is one clause that is brought forward business loss or unabsorbed depreciation whichever is less this should be deducted while computing book profit remember if the information is given for accounting purpose that should be considered only while calculating book profit therefore the rule is brought forward business loss of previous year or earlier years or an absorbed depreciation whichever is less so mind it so you have to take 1 lakh as deduction from net profit while computing book profit so that's about for accounting now let us take for uh, tax purpose first you have to compute the business income then you have to set off this loss if possible so if the business income is more than 15 lakh this loss should be set off against that and the remaining amount should be taken for taken under total income okay so so this one should be considered while computing business income and later on uh, uh, total income come to uh the point third company gets a long term capital gain of 50000 see if you look at the cre uh, credit side of profit and loss account it's not there here so it is not credited so that is the item but not credited so what you have to do is while computing total income you have to uh take this under capital gains then uh there is one more transaction company gets long term capital gain from equity shares which is exempt under section 10 sub section 38 so this is also to be taken while computing total income but it is exempt 
So under capital gains, 50,000 is taxable, whereas uh, long-term capital gain from equity shares, uh, that is exempt. Okay, all right. And then next, uh, yes, next thing is for computing business income. I'm sorry, while well, computing book profit, company gets a long-term capital gain of rupees 50,000 and uh, that is not to be added while computing the while computing the book profit. If it is already there on the credit side of profit and loss account, that is not to be deducted. But if it is not credited already, then no need of crediting it. So this is one point you have to remember. Okay, right? If it is already credited to profit and loss account, don't deduct it. But if it is not already credited to profit and loss account, while computing book profit, don't add it to net profit. So this is what you have to do. So in the last problem also you have learned this. Let me repeat. If this value is on the credit side of profit and loss account, then that is not to be deducted from net profit while calculating book profit. But if it is not credited, in this problem it is not credited, then it is not to be added to net profit while computing book, pro book profit. But look at the next point. Company gets a long term capital gain. Uh, amount is missing here. It should be rupees 30,000. Rupees 30,000 from equity shares, which is exempt under section 10, subsection 38. So it is 30,000 here. Yeah? So this value should necessarily be added to this uh, amount should necessarily be added to net profit while computing book profit. Okay, even though it is not already in the credit side of a profit and loss account, still this value that is 30,000, uh, I told you it's not included here, so 30,000 should be added there. Whereas the previous one, if it is not already included, not to be included. Okay, come to the first point here, first part I did not explain. Uh, yes, reduction under 81B, IB. So here it is not 30% of 14,16,000, rather you have to compute the uh, business income and after set off of 15, 15 lakh, if anything is remaining, on that you have to calculate ATB at the rate of 30%, not on 14,69 net profit. Of course, this is 14,69, that is a profit as per the financial accounting. So you have to compute business income and on that you have to calculate 30%. That too after all set off and adjustments. Look at the debit side now. Depreciation. I told you both these values are to be added and uh, that is taken under disallowed items uh, and added to net profit. But what is to be deducted is depreciation as per section 32, 5 lakh 42,000. But while computing book profit, what you have to do is 6 lakh 10,000 plus 3 lakh should be added while computing book profit. But while deducting, you have to take only the normal profit. In other words, total depreciation except extra depreciation because of revaluation. That means you have to take only 6 lakh 10,000. 6 lakh 10,000 should be deducted. Whereas while adding 9 lakh 10,000. So this is while you are computing book profit. All right. Uh, as far as business income is concerned, nine lakh ten thousand should be added, and five lakh forty two thousand should be deducted. This will not come to the book profit. Remember, the appreciation as per section thirty two, it will not be uh, taken while computing book profit. It is not to be taken rather. Okay. Salary and wages allowed. Income tax is not allowed. Outstanding customs, uh, customs duty. Actually, uh, customs duty, not just customs. Okay, that's not uh, allowed because it is outstanding. That should be added. And uh, proposed dividend, that should be added. Then fees paid for IT appeal, it's allowed. Other expenses, I think nothing is there in the adjustment uh, connected to that. So, entire amount is allowed. Come to the credit side. 
amount withdrawn from general reserve that should be deducted from net profit while computing business income. Similarly, amount withdrawn from revaluation reserve should be deducted. So this is about computation of business income and uh, subsequently total. Whereas while computing book profit, let us see the sorry book profit. Yes, let us see the treatment. So uh, as I have mentioned, total depreciation should be added while deducting only normal depreciation should be taken. Then uh, salary and wages are allowed. Income tax is disallowed. Outstanding customs duty is allowed. Proposed dividend is disallowed. And all of the items are allowed. Come to the credit side. Amount withdrawn from general reserve is disallowed. Amount withdrawn from revaluation reserve is, uh, yes, it is also to be deducted. But while computing uh, business, sorry, book profit, what you have to do is amount withdrawn from general reserve, then amount withdrawn from revaluation reserve, but this shall not be more than extra depreciation. Here, of course, extra depreciation is uh, more than this. So, this uh, withdrawal amount cannot exceed depreciation amount. For example, supposing the amount withdrawn from the revaluation reserve is 4 lakh, so deduction cannot be 4 lakh because maximum amount you can draw a deduct is 3 lakh. The amount withdrawn from revaluation reserve cannot exceed the depreciation amount. Okay, so this point you have to remember. And one more thing is, uh, brought forward business loss for accounting purpose 5 lakh or unabsorbed depreciation 1 lakh whichever is less should be deducted okay then uh, these items capital gains this is not to be added whereas this is to be added to net profit 30,000 you have to include here the value I have omitted and that should be accorded let us see the solution here computation of business income first See, net profit is this much. Excess depreciation, that is 6 lakh, 10,000 plus 3 lakh, 9 lakh, minus 5 lakh, 42,000. Or else, 9 lakh, 10,000 you take here, and under deductions, you take 5 lakh, 42,000. Both are okay. Both, are, both the treatments are okay. Income tax is added. Customs duty unpaid is added. Proposed dividend, that's also added. Amount withdrawn from general reserve is deducted. Amount withdrawn from revaluation uh, reserve is deducted. Yes, so 17 lakh 72,000 is the remaining. Yes, um, so that is the business income before set off. So, you have to set off unabsorbed business loss. Actually, amount is around 18 lakh, I think. Yes, uh, 15 lakh. So, entire amount can be set off. So, 15 lakh is set off. So, what remains is 17 lakh 72,000 minus 15 lakh, 2 lakh 72,000. All right, this is the business income after set off. So, now come to the computation of total income. Income from house property is nil. Business income as computed here, 2 lakh 72,000 after set off. Long term capital gain, I told you here it is given. You see, this is to be taken while computing book profit, sorry, uh, business income, but not the book profit. So, it is taken 50,000, whereas long term capital gains on equity shares is exempt. Uh, even otherwise, it is very clearly given in the problem, it is exempt. So, long term capital gain together is 50,000. Income from other sources, yes, L. The gross total income is 3,32,000. Deductions under section 80 IB, 30% of business income after set off. Business income is 2,72,000. Of that 30%, so 81,600 is the answer. So 2,40,000. Now come to computation of book profit of Delta Limited for the assessment year 2021 for MAT or MAT under section 115 JB. As usual, net profit is the starting point. Income tax is to be added. Proposed dividend should be added. Depreciation, both normal as well as on revaluation, should be added. And the long term capital gain, it is to be necessarily taken here 30,000. 
whereas not to add long term capital gain which is not exempt so 27 lakh 79000 that from deduct normal depreciation don't take uh, extra depreciation or depreciation on revaluation of assets so this uh, uh, 3 lakh it is not to be taken it's not to be taken so only the normal depreciation should be deducted from book profit okay so 6 lakh 20 only normal depreciation normally in all problems this information will not be there extra depreciation so same amount is added and same amount, same amount is deducted but here it's not like that uh, total depreciation is added and only the normal depreciation is deducted amount withdrawn from general reserve as usual then uh, uh, brought forward loss not uh, cf it is bf brought forward business loss 5 lakh or unabsorbed depreciation 1 lakh whichever is less or uh, lesser at least that is 1 lakh then amount withdrawn from the revaluation reserve to the extent it does not exceed extra depreciation because of revaluation of course here 2 lakh is drawn but it is lesser than uh, depreciation on the revaluation therefore that's allowed so book profit is 16 lakh 9000 last one is computing tax liability there are two things one is tax and total income total income consists of long term capital gain so that attracts special rate 20% you so calculate there is no short term capital gain taxable at 15% there is there are no casual incomes like lottery income or say income from crossword puzzle or say lottery winning from lottery etc so on the balance That is two uh, lakh forty thousand minus this fifty thousand long term capital gain. All you get is one lakh ninety thousand four hundred. On that straight away thirty percent. Assume that it is a domestic company. So sixty seven thousand one twenty. To that you have to add surcharge if applicable. But here surcharge is not applicable because total income does not exceed one crore. So total remains the same. On that you have to apply. Health and education such at four percent, and that comes to two thousand six hundred and eighty-five. Okay, tax on total income will be sixty-nine thousand eight hundred five. Look at the uh, tax on book profit as for mat or the, for the mat purposes under section one one five GB. Book profit is sixteen lakh nine thousand. You have seen here. On that fifteen percent, you calculate straight away. Two lakh forty-one thousand three fifty. Surcharge is nil, not applicable. Total remains the same. On that, health and education says, and for here it should be health and education says. Again, have to make a small mistake. Should be health and education says at four percent. So four percent of two lakh forty-one thousand three fifty. That comes to nine thousand six hundred fifty-four. So together. Tax on book profit is two lakh fifty one thousand four. Now, last part, tax liability. What is tax liability? Tax liability is equal to tax on total income or tax on book profit, whichever is less. Ah, uh, sorry, whichever is higher. So, here tax on total income is sixty nine thousand eight not five, whereas tax on book profit is two lakh fifty one thousand four, whichever is higher. So, tax on book profit is higher. So, MAT is applicable here. MAT provision is applicable. What is the mat credit in that case? Two lakh fifty one thousand four minus sixty nine thousand eight not five. So you will get mat credit. Now look at the items. Total income does not exceed one crore. Such charge is nil. Since the normal tax is less than the mat, book profit is taken as total income and mat shall be the tax payable. Mat credit under section one one five J W E is available to the extent of one lakh. Eighty-nine thousand one ninety-nine, which we already calculated. Deductions under section one, on section IIB, is calculated on the business income after set-off of brought forward business loss or carry forward business loss. Okay, carry forward business loss. Okay. The next uh, next one is. 
long term capital gains on equity shares is exempt under section 38 however while computing book profit it should be added as per section 115 jb for business purpose business business income purpose that is exempt whereas for computing book profit it should be considered it should be added amount withdrawn from revaluation register is deductible while computing book profit only to the extent the extra depreciation because of revaluation in other words if the amount withdrawn is higher than the extra depreciation the deduction amount for mat is restricted to extra depreciation of course in our example the amount withdrawn is 2 lakh and it is not more than extra depreciation of 3 lakh therefore entire 2000 is allowed to be deducted okay by this i have completed the solution to this problem thank you very much